this shoulder is higher than the other. Why is it not? I'm wearing a striped shirt. It's not a Breton striped shirt. It is from, from Old Navy. The effort is there. Today, we are journeying to the very heart of Paris, where you will look casually and so smart. That was not a French accent. I don't know what kind of accent that was. My name is Teresa, and this is the effortless French girl aesthetic. The effortless French girl look, it revolves around this cool vibe, the effortless chic dress of the French Parisian woman or girl. Around 1957, the whole beat beatnik look embraced by artists and poets. I'm thinking about Audrey Hepburn in the movie Funny Girl where she just basically wore all black, a black turtleneck, black cigarette pants, black ballet flats. And she looked very chic and also very Parisian. I think the movie took place in Paris. But I remember that look where she did her like jazz exercise modern dance in front of Fred Astaire at some kind of coffee joint. That is the quintessential Parisian chic look in my mind. Americans really do associate Audrey Hepburn with Parisian chic. She's from Belgium. I don't know if she lives in Paris. She's like a very international type of person. City girl, very chic at the time. And also the French new wave phenomenon in the late 50s, early 60s. So a little bit of history in Hollywood. We had the studio system for many, many years from the 20s to the 50s. The studio system produced these big, grand, epic blockbusters like The Ten Commandments, Ben-Hur, Cleopatra. But the studio slowly went bankrupt. And around this time, cinema was getting into a more artsy vibe as influenced by French movies at the time. These films were artsy, intimate, and they were not big studio productions with a hundred extras and huge sets. They were like Breathless. Breathless was the film, and I think it was Breathless 1959. Don't quote me on this. I'm just pulling it out of my mind. Breathless 1959 was the French New Wave film that made a leap over to the American Pond, starred Gene Seberg and Jean-Paul. I really wanted to just speak without looking this up. So let me just look this up. Jean-Paul Belmundo, very famous French actor. I'm sorry if I'm butchering his name. And Jean Seberg, she was an American actress, but she's very much associated with that cool French girl vibe. I recall she wore a graphic t-shirt in one of the most popular scenes. I was born on the avenue of Cham Alice, and my first words were New York Herald Tribune. I think that's pretty accurate. I've come across that scene twice, once in the the original movie and the second time in this 2003 kind of artsy erotic movie called Dreamers starring Eva Green and then she repeated the same line. Dreamers had a lot of nudity. Saw the dangly bits, everybody's dangly bits. We saw it all and it was up close. It was, it was out there, but it was artsy. And then it ended with Edith Pilaf. Sorry if I butcher her name with her famous song. I mean, I can't speak French to save my life. I would like to visit Paris one day, never been, but nobody will, will probably have anything to do with me because I can't speak the language. So I've got to, I've got to do lingo up. So that was the first instance of popularity of the effortless French girl, Jean Seberg, Bridget Bardot. We have, who else do we have? In many ways, Audrey Hepburn, Coco Chanel, Catherine Deneuve, who starred in this French film called Belle du Jour, where she was kind of like a bored housewife with ennui who wanted to get into the escort service. Very sensual topics. And a variety of other actresses in the 50s and 60s that I do not know, but I probably would recognize their face because I used to be on 2014 Tumblr, soft grunge Tumblr with the slice of the effortless French girl was to repost gifts from French movies, which I've never seen, but we usually have the subtitle and it was both existential and deep. The effortless French girl, popular in the 50s, in the 60s, 70s, then she had a quiet 80s and 90s, but then she came back full force in 2014. 2014 was also the year that Vogue just went all in on their French girl articles, how to be a French girl, how to be skinny like a French girl, how to obtain that effortless windswept French girl hair, how to obtain the perfect red lip, how to dress like a French girl, the capsule wardrobe one needs to dress like a French girl. We all know that Vogue is responsible for elevating the French girl, putting her up on that pedestal. We're here for it. There's something about this French girl that speaks to all of us. Maybe not all of us. 
It seems like America, we're obsessed with the French girl. She is the epitome of what we strive for. How do we look good and put together and effortless and chic? Vogue has put her on a pedestal and we've kept her on the pedestal. There's something about her, like how does she do it? How does she roll out of bed? It looked like she didn't brush her hair and then still look good, still look put together, still look like she could go to a cafe, she could go to a deli or a boulangerie. How does she go out with a satin cami, pair of ballet flats, and just look like a million bucks? So this effortless French girl style is in contrast to the American obsession with perfection, spend a lot of money just buying a lot of clothes in general, a lot of fast fashion, just to have that latest style to look trendy. We also spend a lot of time and effort in gyms, in our crazy fluctuating diets. We're a culture of diet fads, but the French girl, in contrast, she doesn't pack on her makeup. She has neutral makeup. She has very stained lips, the perfect red lips that she applies with her fingers. She doesn't try that hard. She's not going to put on that 2016 beauty influencer face. You know what I'm talking about? You pack on the foundation, then you got the concealer, then you got 23 other things you put on your face to look like you have no pores whatsoever, to look like you were photoshopped. The French girl is not going to do that. She's just naturally beautiful. She's a little unkept. In fact, she may not even wear lipstick because she drinks all that red wine and it's like red wine stained lips. And she doesn't need to work out because, you know, she gets her exercise by walking through the streets of Paris. She does not indulge in a junk food American diet. She eats her French cuisine and she drinks her wine, which is very slimming and good for your heart, by the way. And she also indulged in a nice cigarette that doesn't really have any health consequences for her. She's not what I am right now, but she's who I want to be. But will I ever be an effortless French girl. Well, first I have to learn French. I have a beret. Several years ago, I wanted to up my effortless French girl game. I actually don't think French women wear berets. I think that's just the stereotypical American view of what you need in a French wardrobe. So all being said and done, I think I look like a mime. I just need white face paint, a tear, and I would be a mime. I took drama class in seventh grade. I was very excited about it because I have like an inner dramatic flair, but my drama teacher was such a curmudgeon and he basically hated all of us and he really killed my love of drama. There was a week in class where we all had to mime. I was getting ready in the morning. It was like, get ready with me, but I'm a mime. So I brushed my teeth, I gargled. I accidentally pushed my hair back with the hand that was holding my cup and he just freaked out on me. He's Stop, did you know what you just did? Oh no, sir, no I didn't. It's like you just threw water all over your head. He really killed miming for me because for a moment, for a split second while I was miming getting ready with me, I felt like I was really getting ready. Who knows what kind of mime I could have been had it not been for my grumpy drama teacher. I think he became a mortician afterward which is a good career pivot for him because he should not be around live people. He should be around dead people. So what do you need in your capsule wardrobe to be an effortless French woman? You need a silk scarf with a classic print design. Don't go too wild. Don't go for crazy neon. It's like usually a neutral color. If you can afford it, it's an Hermes scarf or Sabina Sauvage scarf. There's usually a bunny on it. Okay, I can't. My hair smells really good. Like I can literally just sit here and sniff my hair for hours. A black bra with a little peekaboo in the cleavage, maybe a push-up bra, a bralette, and your slinky satin silk white button down. She always has black tights to pair with a mini skirt perhaps. Black tights keeps you classy, keeps you warm during the chilly spring days. Striped t-shirts. Extra points if it's a Breton, 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 don't know how to say it. Whatever is more pretentious sounding. Striped shirt, a classic, classic pattern. Black stripes, navy stripes, red stripes. I'm a fan of stripes, but are they a fan of me? 
who's to say? Vintage graphic tee, the more vintage looking, the better. It could be a vintage band tee, like Rolling Stones, the vintage summer camp shirt. Even better if you buy a vintage t-shirt from a thrift store that's actually from the 80s, the 70s. Extra points if the graphic is Faded. This all stems from Gene Seberg's vintage graphic tee in Breathless. And this is a very millennial French girl look. I see street photography of women wearing their vintage graphic tee tucked into a slender midi skirt with a slit in the thigh or the vintage graphic tee with a moto jacket or a denim jacket, an oversized denim jacket, a satin slip dress. It's a mixture of a 90s revival that was very popular a few years back and still is popular. The satin slip dress is your quintessential. I rolled out of bed, I'm in my sexy lingerie, and I'm just going to go out about town in my, my slip. And that embodies the effortless, I don't care look. You pair that with a windswept, bedridden hair that still looks good. Maybe some smudged eye makeup. And that is also kind of like a party French girl look. Usually because the satin slip dress is so sexy and so so provocative. You wear it with a cover-up, maybe a oversized cardigan that you wear with one shoulder revealed as you sip your morning espresso or cappuccino, or you can wear it with an oversized um, leather jacket. A trench coat is always a staple. We're going for timeless here, so you would hear me mention the trench coat and the white button down so many times. I've never worn like leather pants or leather skirts. I don't know if that is very comfortable for me. I have this like obsession with my bottom half breathing. <laughs> don't like my thighs or my back of knee area to sweat. I don't like leg sweat and I definitely don't like crotch sweat. I would assume that anything with leather would uh, be very constricting, unbreathable. Do you like to indulge once in a while in a spicy romance novel? And one of my key turnoffs is that BDS genre, you know, like the whole 50 shades of gray because of the leather. Don't get offended if you yourself like to dress in head to toe leather and own other leather objects. I don't know, how clean is that? I, know, I like to picture the characters wearing organic materials. I like to picture a puffy shirt, but the puffy shirt man could also be like a horse rider, a horseman, and he may have to don leather at some point, but his leather is used for horseback riding. Like, I just think like who cleans up this leather? I hope it's not happening in a hotel because they always leave that stuff for the housekeeper and it's like she's not getting paid enough to clean up your mess. Sometimes I wonder how I arrive at these asides. Skinny jeans. Effortless French girl is still operating in a millennial fashion. She's got her skinny jeans and her matchstick jeans. But lately from watching Not So Blondes, what people are wearing in Paris, I do see a lot of French women wearing a looser fitting pant. The pant style is not regulated here. We just went through this whole revolution. Skinny jeans versus wide leg jeans versus straight leg jeans. The French woman, she is always on top of fashion. She likes classic pieces, but she's always on top of the trends as well. And she knows when to incorporate these trends into her timeless style. She is in no way boring. She knows when to accessorize. She knows when to pivot. She knows when to adapt. She knows that some trends come and go, but she is nothing if not an experimenter in fashion. As for shoes, ballet flats, low Loafers, ankle boots, a Chelsea boot, and a white sneaker. The French lady, she loves comfort, but she is not adverse to a stiletto. Even if she has a stiletto, she would probably carry ballet flats or her white sneakers for the rescue. She is nothing if not resourceful. The French lady keeps it minimal when it comes to makeup. She likes a neutral palette. She's not going to go into the rhinestones and rock star and blue, purple eyeshadow. She would definitely not dip her toe into falsies, but if she does, it would be like individual strands of falsies, not the whole strip. But she does like a red lip. Occasionally, for nighttime, she might indulge in a smoky eye. She does like to smoke, however. I'm not saying that they all smoke. Um, it does give you something to do, it does keep the pounds off, it does make you thin. There's that famous book, Why French Women Don't Get Fat. It has to do with smoking, the lifestyle, wine consumption. Drinking wine is a lot less calorie 
calories than drinking soda. They don't have a hometown buffet there. They don't have Sizzler. She's not going to gorge herself. She's gonna nibble on cheese, on a baguette, sip coffee. I don't get like a Starbucks mocha frap. And you just drink a tiny espresso shot with no sugar in it. Way less calories, gets your metabolism going. She's a walker. That's why she has her comfortable shoes, her white sneakers, her ballet flats. The ballet flats are not that comfortable. So usually in street photography photos, they're walking with purpose. They always have some place to be. There's like a flea market going on. There's like a gallery show. There's a coffee date with a beau, with a girlfriend. They're walking along the banks of the scene. They're casually browsing a flea market. They're going to a vintage shop. Most of America is a very car centric place. Everywhere you go, you go to Costco, you gotta, gotta get your car. That's time that you're not exercising. So she, her whole life is one giant cardio exercise. The French lady is known for her windswept, bedridden, effortless hair. It's the undone look, but it's completely done. There's strands all over the place, but yet even as the strands are in disarray, they look good. They look like you mean to do it, but at the same time, don't mean to do it. So it'll look like you have it together, even if your hair is a mess. Oh gosh, my hair smells so good. It's controlled chaos. Louis XIV, the Sun King, had a huge part in creating what we think of as that exclusive French fashion houses that we have today. So while he reigned as king, he made it illegal to import clothing from other countries. Thereby, if you wanted to look fashionable and you had to look fashionable as a nobleman in Versailles, he had a very strict and very elaborate dress code that you had to abide by. You had to dress to the nines. You had to be up to date in fashion or else you would be basically kicked out of court. You would be ostracized. You would not be fit to be in the company of the king. By royal decree, his noblemen had to look good. And because they can't import clothes from elsewhere, France became a very self-reliant fashion center. All the designers came from France. Chantilly lace came from a region of France called Chantilly. France quickly became a fashion capital. And that's why right now we defer to French designers and Paris Fashion Week as the origin of couture of where high fashion began. That's why if you read enough historical novels or watch a lot of period dramas, a lot of aristocratic English ladies would always long to wear what the French ladies at court are wearing because the French ladies are the ones who are the trendsetters. And in America during the colonial days, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, they really put France on a pedestal. Most of their furniture imported from France Benjamin Franklin was an ambassador in Paris. Thomas Jefferson was, I think he was a diplomat in Paris. Basically, if Hamilton taught me anything, he was in France during the entirety of the American Revolution. I don't know how I began with French girl fashion. Ended up talking about Benjamin Franklin and colonial forefathers. This is a deep rabbit hole, folks. This is a deep rabbit hole indeed. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That will really help me with algorithm. And if you're not subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you could get more of this in your inbox to be notified. Goodbye. I think the good smell is leaving my hair.